Hey folks, welcome back to another Dice Tower preview. I'm uh, Mark, and today we're taking a look at the second edition of Dark Domains, which is brought to you by Laboratory H. It's for two to five players, ages 14 and up, and games generally run about 120 minutes. In Dark Domains, each player takes on the role of a city leader, attempting to expand the frontier of Haros into the hinterland. Unbeknownst to the powers in Haros, some of those leaders, namely the players, are secretly evil to the core. And in the thrall of the necromancer, once away from the bustling city and the oversight of the courts, these overlords create domains that outwardly appear to be beacons of light and hope. Eventually, however, their true colors will come through, and those upstanding pillars of the community will retreat to their lairs as the masquerade ends, and their lands begin to decay into wastelands overrun by foul monsters and nefarious henchmen. But all is not peaches and cream in the lands of darkness. Haros is home to the famous Torin Company, and has never any supply of heroes and adventurers. Once the word reaches Haros that darkness is afoot in the domains, it is only a matter of time before the nosy adventurers begin to seek out the dens of horror to stop the evil. Dark Domains is a worker placement game where you, the players, attempt to create a domain that provides you with the most evil. Depicted in the game by Skulls, you must use minions, henchmen, monsters, and magic to stamp out the good, repel Torin Company, and cover their lands in darkness. So yes, this is the second edition of Dark Domains. And the thing that has always drew me into this game is the fact that you really get to be evildoers. It's a really nice twist on the whole victory point type of game. It is a worker placement. You're putting your workers out to do various things. You're getting spell cards. You're getting buildings, which eventually you'll corrupt. And you're going to be generating resources. And that's one of the neat things they've done this game, which we'll cover. But in general, though, you know, it's the same game, but they've just done a nice job of streamlining all the aspects. So what's new in this version? Well, you know what? They did a lot of little changes that really streamline gameplay. But the big change in the game is the fact that they removed all the resource tokens in favor of this new resource board and you'll be tracking everything using cubes but again this is prototype and from what i understand they're going to be indented so your cubes won't be shifting and moving around and so forth you'll be able to easily track what you're doing and where you're going with this board and the thing is, is that it has all the different types of resources you expect if you know the game you've got wood you've got your workers you've got stone and metal and then for the elemental resources you've got earth wind, fire, and water. And of course, you'll be tracking all your coins here as well. And they even give you a nice sidebar for tracking the different phases where you are in the round. So this has really shown that it has streamlined, like I keep saying, it has really sped up gameplay. And I can attest to that after using it. It's really just made the gameplay that much quicker and you're just moving through the different resources as you spin them and acquire them throughout the course of the game. A few other things I want to highlight here, starting with the spells. Now, there are less spell cards, and in the previous version of the game, most folks would go after the green deck, and it made sense because you would get good things. It really wouldn't mess with anybody else at the table. But now they've changed the rules up that you will be requiring multiple different types of cards, really making all of them more integrated in general into the game. And then you have the building cards. There's less of these as well. And the neat thing here is that they've taken those and kind of rebalanced them to some degree to make them all pretty advantageous to acquire and put into your tableau. And then eventually you will be corrupting them in order to get all those evil points. Also, they tweaked a couple of the fortune cards in order to make the fifth minion more standard and usable through the course of the game, as well as expansions, obviously. And then henchmen, oh my gosh. So some of the henchmen were somewhat mediocre, so to say, but now they are definitely more useful and more desired in order to acquire them. And then finally, the masters of the domains, those cards, you know, they change these up as well. And it, one of the big things with these cards and the rules is that now they're gonna be drawn in order to allow you to have a starting sum of the different types of resources. So that's a nice change as well. And a handful of rules worth mentioning here, things they've added to the rule book, things maybe that weren't as clear before, like the monster movement. So if you have a monster in the wilds on your tableau, not on a building, once a building does flip, to the dark side, you can move one of those monsters to the building, so it's very straightforward. Also, you have neutral monsters. Once they're eliminated, uh, you can go to that pool of eliminated monsters and buy them back for three coins, which is really nice. Also, one of the worker spots on the board is your first player marker. If no one takes that this particular round, well, then the first player marker will rotate around the table, so it will still move. And one of the, also the nice things is that they've clarified in the rules a little bit better about attacking versus adventuring, 
But the biggest thing that I liked really that they changed is the fact that when you have a building in play on your tableau and these heroes come after your building and try to destroy it, well, instead of destroying it this time, they purify the building, which flips it back to its light side. And I really found that to be an interesting rule, a nice add to the game for sure. So that's just an overview, a brief look at what to expect in this new edition, but also there's a new expansion and I pulled an excerpt from that expansion. I got a brief look at it, but check this out. The Lotus District expansion for Dark Domains provides new challenges and new opportunities to challenge even the staunchest ally of the Necromancer. A new mini board is included, the Lotus District, which allows a wide variety of elements with one minion, as well as the Wing Kong Market, where everything is for sale. But the interesting thing here is that currency is evil instead of coin. Also, there are new buildings inspired by the architects, and there are new monsters that can be imported into the lair in your accursed domain. New fortunes are revealed by mystics of that foreign land, and finally, new adventurers and henchmen walk the streets of the district eager to see glory in your defeat or provide their own unique aid to your cause. So, the expansion really focuses on magic and elements within the components of the game and you know expanding the base game and increasing the already formidable magic capabilities found in Dark Domains. I really am excited to play more of this expansion. I want to try more of the buildings and more of the monsters obviously, but I like this trade-off you have to make when you go to the market spending your evil points instead of coin. That adds this nice level of decision making to the game for sure. All right, folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower Paid preview, and some of the elements you've seen here have been in prototype form, but keep a close eye on the campaign for any other changes that still may occur. Now that said, I was already a fan of this game, and I really think that some of the efficiencies they put into play really have made this a uh, much quicker type of game to play. I really like the management of the different resources and how you handle that. And some of the rule changes really made a lot of sense. I like that you have more options, really. You feel like you have more options in dealing with the different types of spell cards and why you might go after the different types. But again, if you want more information about how the game plays overall, go check out some of those really well done how to play videos they have lined up. But folks, ultimately, if this looks like something of interest to you, I'm sure they'd appreciate your support. So I think that's it for me. And until next time, we'll see you at the table.